Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful earrings with Super Duos. These earrings are so easy to make and they don't really take that long. You can probably get them finished in about an hour. Um, something else I love about these earrings is the size. They are the perfect size. They're the size of a quarter. But yet, they have so much detail in them to be so small. So I really love these earrings. And these are probably my most favorite earrings that I've done a video on to date. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy this tutorial because I love these earrings. Um, I do need to let you know something though. My lamp is acting up today, so I'm using another one. And the other one I'm using also has issues, so it might go off while I'm filming, and I'll have to stop filming and fix it. So, just to let you know, if it gets dark, that my lamp's acting up. So anyways, that's it. Let's get started. Here is the list of materials you will need to make one pair of earrings. I will be making the matching earring to this one here, so this is what it looks like. So I already used up half the beads in my tray to make this one, so the other half is going to be for the earring I'm making in the video. Now you're going to need two pieces of six pound fire line. This is my fire line, six pound. And each piece will be two foot long. So again, two pieces of six pound fire line. Each piece will be cut two foot long. You're going to need 24 super duos, 24 four millimeter bicone crystals, 16 80 seed beads, 11 0 or 10 0 seed beads. These ones here I made with 11 0 seed beads. This one is 10 0 and this one is 11 0. And these here in this earring are 10 0 seed beads. You're also going to need two ear wires or lever back earrings. Um, I really love the lever backs. They are so comfortable. I've actually fallen asleep with them in my ears and woken up and the next morning and I never knew that I went to bed with them. They're that comfortable and they don't fall out. They're really awesome. You're also going to need one size 10 beading needle right there. Now remember, I always leave the list of materials you will need for this design in the description bar below this video. So look down there and you'll see all the materials you'll need for this video. And I also leave a link to my Facebook page if you want to check that out. I went ahead and threaded my needle onto my two feet of six pound fire line. Now I'm going to pick up four 80 C beads, just like this, and slide them down toward the end of my tail, just like this. Now I'm going to hold this right here on my finger, take my working thread, wrap it around my finger, and pass my needle through all these beads, just like this, into a circle shape. So you can see my thread looks like a circle now. Now I have to measure my tail, and I need six inch tail, so later on I can reinforce this. So Let's see. A little bit longer. So, right here is fine. Pull that tight. Okay, so I have my six inch tail. So, now what I'm going to do, you could see what it looks like. My strings are over here. I'm going to tie a surgeon's knot. So, I'm going to take the shorter piece, I'm going to wrap it over the longer, just like this, and pull it down it tight. Now this here is a little messed up so I straighten it out right now so it looks like a little plus sign. So just like this. And then I'm gonna finish tying my knot. So I'm gonna take the shorter tail, wrap it over my longer one once and then twice just like this and then I'm gonna pull it tight just like this and pull it nice and tight. So this is what it looks like and my knot is right here. Now to make this more secure I'm not going to leave this knot here. I'm going to tie one more knot. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pass through these two beads. So my knot is... Let me straighten this out. My knot is right here and I'm going to pass through this seed bead and this one. So through two on this side. Then I'm going to flip this over 
and I'm going to take my tail thread and I'm going to pass it through these two 8 C beads on the side. One more. Just like this. Now I'm going to tie another surgeon's knot on this side. So with the tail, I'm going to wrap it around the longer thread. Just like this. One time and bring that down. And now I'm going to wrap it twice. One, two. Just like that and bring the knot down. Pull it nice and tight. And if you want, you can do one more little knot. Just go over and under. Do that one more time. And slide that down. Just like this. Pull it tight. And you can see our knot's right here. And our other knot is over here, but it kind of went into the 80C bead. But that's okay. So now I have to get this needle ready to pick up beads. And right now it's here. So I need it to be exiting out of this bead. So I'm going to go through this one. And now we're ready to pick up more beads. So don't cut this tail off. We're going to need this tail later on to reinforce our work. And I also use it to hold on to my piece. What I do is I just wrap it around my fingers a few times. And I hold it like this in my hand. So right now I'm exiting out of this bead. And what I'm going to do is pick up one super duo and three seed beads. And remember you can use 11 o or 10 o So just like this and slide this down. So right here I'm exiting out of this bead on the bottom and I need to go through this one. So what I have to do is flip this super duo over just like this and I'm going to take my needle go through the other hole and then I have to go through this 80 c bead just like this. So pull it through and that's what it looks like. Now we have to do the same thing again. Pick up a duo and three seed beads. Slide it down. We are exiting out of this bead and I need my duo to be flipped over. I'm going to go through the other hole and then through this 80 c bead. Just like this and pull it through. I'm going to do it again. A duo and three seed beads. Slide it down. So I'm exiting out of this one and I need to go through the other one. Be careful because I did mess this up one time. I accidentally went back through this one because it flipped over and I went through that bead again. So I had to take it apart and fix it. So out of this bead, through the duo into a U, and then through this 80 C bead. Just like this. And be careful that this here doesn't twist because that's something else that happened to me. It twisted like that and it wasn't laying right and I realized that it twisted. So pull it tight. And now we have to do it one more time. One duo and three 11 or 10 C beads, whatever you're using. So slide this down. Slide this down and I'm exiting out of this bead here. I have to go through this duo and then through this 80 C bead, just like this. And see how it's wanting to twist? Make sure that you straighten it out. We don't need it to do the twist. And pull it tight, nice and tight. And now I'm going to take my needle, pass it through the super duo. I'm exiting right here out of this bead. I'm going to go through the super duo and the C bead in front of it, if I can. Okay, just like this. Pull it through. And then I'm going to go through this C bead here, the point. Now pull it tight, because we need it to be nice and tidy so we can uh, add more beads from here on. So again, make sure that all of these are straight and that they're not twisting and you didn't go uh, backwards through an 80 C bead. So once you have this, we're ready to So exiting out of this bead right here, I'm going to pick up one duo, one 10 seed bead, a bicone, a 10 seed bead, and a duo. So from here, I'm going to go through the next point, 
just like this and hold it between your fingers and pull it through just like this turn it now I'm going to pick up another duo tenno four millimeter bicone another seed bead and then a duo just like this coming out of here I'm going to go through the next point just like that so we have two sides done and I have to turn it again to do this side so a duo a tenno seed bead four millimeter bicone a seed bead and a duo just like this and I have to go through the next point so out of here through here pull it tight and this is what it looks like make sure you don't have any gaps right here sometimes there'll be little gaps so now I have to pick up a duo a seed bead four millimeter bicone a seed bead and a duo just like this I turn my work exiting out of here I'm going to go through the next one, the point here, but I'm not just going to go through that, I also have to go through the duo, just like that, the bottom hole. Pull that through, and this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to pull my string tight, and I have to go through this duo here. Just the one, not the other one. And pull the string tight again. So this is what it looks like. So now that we went around this duo and, and exiting out of this hole, what I have to do is fill in the spaces between the duos. So right here you can see these spaces. I filled those spaces in with 80 seed beads. So pick up one 80 seed bead and go through the other duo just like this. And it pops into place. Pull it snug. And now I'm going to pick up one 10 seed bead, bicone seed bead bicone seed bead just like this and I'm gonna go through this duo right here just the one duo not both and there we have one side now I have to fill this space in again so I'll pick up another eight and go the next duo just like that now I'm here again and I have to add my seed beads and bicone. So seed bead, bicone, seed bead, bicone, seed bead. Just like this. And I'm coming out of here. I have to go through this duo. Just like this. Now I'm here again. I have to fill that in with an 80 seed bead go through the next one just like that now a seed bead a bicone seed bead bicone and a seed bead out of here I have to go through this one now I'm right here and I have to fill that in with my last 80 seed bead so I'm gonna go through that one there and that pops into place. So this is what we have. Now we have one side left to fill. So I have to pick up one seed bead, one bicone, one seed bead, one bicone, and one seed bead. Just like this. Now I'm going to go through this duo and through the tenno seed, not the tenno, the eight-o seed bead, I'm sorry. So out of there, through this duo and the eight-o seed bead all the way through and this is what it looks like so right now I'm exiting out of this 80 seed bead and I need to reposition my working uh, string because I have to add on this now I have put a bale here with an ear wire to see what it was like but I didn't like it it did hang square but I don't know it was kind of weird and it was awkward how it hung in my ear. I guess I would say that. So um, I'm going to put my ear finding here. So right now I'm here and I have to reposition my needle all the way over here. So through the duo, the seed bead, the bicone, and the other seed bead. Just like this. Pull it snug and this is what we have. Now I have to pick up two seed beads 
the ear finding in the last two seed beads. And I'm going to go through this seed bead here in a circle. So I'm going around. Pull it. And it should look just like this. You do have to push this in because it does want to stick out. Now, I could right now go down the side and tie knots right here and it would be done with. But if this seed bead breaks, and it probably will because it is under pressure, then my earring is going to be destroyed. So what I do, so the jewelry is, is better made and it lasts longer, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tie knots there. What I do, exiting out of this bead, I'm going to go through all these beads here on the outer edge, all the way back around, reinforcing the earring. And then I'm going to come out this bicone, and I'm going to go straight up these seed beads through the ear finding, down these two seed beads, and then through this bicone. So I'm going just like this around. And then I'm going to start tying knots. But if I were to just leave it just like this and tie my knots here, this earring would probably break eventually because the seed bead is the only thing that's keeping it attached to that. So I also do the same thing whenever I'm adding my clasps onto a piece. I don't like to attach things like this by one little seed bead. Now if it was a large bead, like maybe a six millimeter bead, it would probably be okay. But those beads also do crack and break. I've had it happen to me before. So now I have to reinforce this going all the way around. So pull this snug and I'm going to get my tail out of my way over here. And I'm just going to pass through all these beads. As many as I can at one time. It is hard though to pass through the duo, the eight-o, and a duo. To do all three of those at one time, it's kind of hard. It doesn't want you to go through. So just like this. And see how this is being lifted out of there? Push this ear finding back in and pull it tight. We want it to be one with the earring. So from here, I'm going to go through these, through this duo, and the 8 -o. And you do have to wiggle your needle to get it through sometimes. Turning it through this duo. And the C bead and the bicone. C bead through this bicone. C bead and the duo. Edo, the duo. C bead by cone, C bead by cone. C bead and the duo. If you put your finger in there and separate those, you can get through it easier. And sometimes you might have to just flip it over to get through. I've also had to do that. Just wiggle it through. Now through this eight and the duo. Now I have an eleven or an ten o and a bicone. So just like this, go through the bicone. Don't go through that C bead. So now I'm gonna go straight through these, and instead of this just being held on by one seed bead, it's also going to be held on by the bug cones, which is going to make this earring a lot more durable. So through these two seed beads, through the ear finding, and the two seed beads on this side, just like this, and then out this bicone cone and the seed bead, just like this. And I have to go through this duo here because I'm going to tie my knot at that 80 seed bead. So just like this and wiggle it through. Ouch. And I got wrapped around my ear finding. So I need to pull this out. There we go. So now I'm going to tie 
my half hitch knot right here before this 80C bead. So this is what it looks like. It's much more secure with the thread going through the bicone and these this bail here and this bicone on this side. And it looks better. You could tell that the difference if you did just make that loop and tie it here, it would not look as nice because um reinforcing that made it real tidy and it just it looks so perfect how it's made. So now I'm ready to tie my half hitch knots on the side over here. I'm going to tie my half hitch knot right here before the 80 seed bead and then I'll pull the knot into the seed bead. So I'm going to take my needle and go underneath right here, come out, make a loop and go through the loop twice. Now I'm going to pull the knot down right here and then I'm going to pass through this 80 seed bead and the super duo. Wiggle it through, just like this, and I caught that earring again. And now I'm going to go through this one seed bead and tie a knot right here in front of this bicone because the bicone has a larger hole than the seed bead. To make a loop and go through it twice. Pull the knot down right here and pull it tight. So keep going tying knots. So I just tied one here and I'm going to pass through here and tie another. Tie as many knots as you can before the beads with the larger holes. So obviously the 110 and 10 C beads, they have smaller holes. So you want to tie your knots right before the bead with a larger hole. So um, you're not going to tie your knot under the duos because that's a pain in the butt. Um, tie your knot right before you go through the 80 C beads and right before you go through the bicones. So try to tie as many knots as you can going around this outer edge and um, <clears throat> try to hide a lot of your tail. And remember, do not cut your thread at the knot because it will come undone. So I'm going to go ahead and try to um, tie more knots on the outer edge and use up as much thread as I can so this is really durable and it lasts for many many years. So I, I finished the uh, tying of the knots with the other thread and now I'm going to take the tail that's on the inside and work with this. So we tied two knots here, um, sergeant's knot, there's one here and there's one here. And that's good enough. I don't have to tie anymore. That surgeon's knot is really secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my needle and my thread and I'm just going to go back through my work and reinforce it. So right here I'm exiting out of this 80 C bead because my knot kind of went in there so I'm gonna go through here but if you're closer to uh, somewhere else where you like over here then you might have to go up this side so wherever you're closest to you're gonna go through that hole and you're gonna follow kind of the same thread pass that we've already done so I'm gonna go through this duo and this seed bead right here and now I'm going to go through this one, but this one could be tricky to get through. So if you can't lift up and go through it like this, what you do is you take the needle, put it through the bead, and push it out the back side. Just like that. So that's a little trick. If you're ever working on beading like this and it's kind of stiff and hard to go through, try to go through the other side. So pull that through, and now I have to flip it over. And I'm going to go down this seed bead and the duo. And wiggle it to get it to come up. Just like this. So now I'm going to work in this direction. Reinforcing this. And hiding my tail. Just like this. So keep doing this. Following your old thread paths. And remember if you get in tricky spots like this you might have to go down and out the other side just try to remember the direction that you're working in. I started here and I'm gonna go down this way reinforcing this earring. Um, doing this doesn't just make 
this more durable and lasts longer, but it's also making your piece a lot stiffer because it is kind of flexible. So um, once you weave through this a lot more in the middle and try to weave through it as much as you can and use up your tail, it really does make this a lot stiffer for when you wear it. And you want it to be nice and stiff. Okay, so I'm going to go through this one. And I'm going to go here. So keep going doing this. So I'm going to go through these here, through this 8 through this one, and when I get here, I'm going to go through this duo, and I'm going to go in this direction, reinforcing this row as far as I can go until I run out of thread. Um, try to do the same thing that I'm doing, because like I said, it makes your piece a lot more durable, and it makes this a lot stiffer, so it's not so soft and flexible. So keep going. So before I go, quick update. For you, those of you that don't follow me on Facebook, don't know this, but um, my original Facebook page was just like a personal page, and Facebook recently made me go to a business page. So all the pictures that you guys have posted for my videos are lost. I cannot get them back, and Facebook it won't do anything about it. So I now have a business page, so I have a like button. So all the people I had as friends and all the people that follow me are now my likes, if that makes sense. So I had like 5,000 friends and 3,000 um, followers, so that's all combined into likes now. So if you want, if you friended me and I haven't accepted because I was full on friends, all you have to do is like my Facebook page now, and you're going to get to see all the stuff I make and You'll get to see um, when I post a new video or pictures that I post on my Facebook page and comments and all that stuff. And you get to see all the gorgeous jewelry that everybody else has made for my tutorials. So go ahead and check out my Facebook page. I leave a link to it all the time in the description bar below this video. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. Please like this video, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos, and don't forget to like my Facebook page. Thanks for watching.